Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 15. And in this video, we're going to learn about exponents. Okay, for the lesson objectives, we want to learn the terminology associated with exponents. We want to learn how to write a repeated multiplication in exponent form. And we want to learn to solve problems that contain exponents. So what exactly is an exponent? Well, let me show you through an example. Let's say we had something like 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That takes up a lot of room on my sheet. I wish there was an easier way to write that. Well, in fact, there is using an exponent. Essentially, what I would do to write this in exponent form is I would count the number of threes that I have there. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I would take this number that I'm multiplying by itself, this 3, and I would write it down. So I would have my 3 there. And then I would put an exponent, which is a small little number that goes up in the top right corner, just telling me how many factors of three that I have. This number right here is called a base. It's called a base. When you write a number in exponent form, the base is the number that is being multiplied by itself. In this case, it's three. Right? I have three times three times three times three times three times three times three. So three is the base. The 7, again, this little small number in the top right corner, is the exponent. The exponent. And again, this tells us how many factors of 3 we have. Let's think about another one. Let's say I had 2 times 2 times 2. If I want to write this in exponent form, I have this number 2. That's going to be my base. 2 is going to be my base. Again, it's the number that we're multiplying by itself. And then I'm doing it three times. One, two, three. I have three factors, so that's the exponent. Three is the exponent. So for the purposes of pre-algebra, you can just think about an exponent as telling you how many factors of the base you're going to have. Because the only exponents we're going to look at at this point will be whole numbers, usually one or larger. Okay, and in a lot of cases, it's just going to be two or larger. We have some special rules when we start dealing with exponents that are zero and one. So essentially for pre-algebra, you're just going to think about it using whole number exponents, and it's going to tell you how many factors of the base that you have. And again, when you think about zero and one, you'll have some special rules for those. So any number raised to the power of one is just itself. So in other words, if I have six and it's raised to the power of one, and I say, well, what is 6 to the power of 1? Well, it's just itself. It's just 6. Or I could flip that and say, okay, I want to write 12 in exponent form. How would I do that? Well, I would take 12. That would be the base. And then I would take 1 and write that for my exponent. So if you have a number that's just hanging out by itself, let's say 13. And again, you want to write it in exponent form. You just write the number as the base and put a 1 as the exponent. So any number raised to the power of 1 is just itself. Now we have a rule for a number raised to the power of zero, but we're going to cover that later on because that's something we need to go through and explain. So for right now, we're just going to work with, again, whole number exponents that are generally going to be two or larger, and we know the rule for one, so we're safe there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some language that you're going to hear when you work with exponents. So when we raise something to a power, we generally say the number to the, and then that power. So for example, if I have 14 and my exponent is, let's say, 7, this would be the number, which is 14, and then to the, in this case, it's the seventh power, right, because it's a 7, so 14 to the seventh power. If I have 8 and my exponent is 4, this would be 8 to the fourth power. If I have 9 and my exponent is 13, it would be 9 to the 13th power, so on and so forth. Okay, so there's two special cases that I want you to know. And the first one is when we raise a number to the second power, okay, meaning we have an exponent of 2, we say the number is squared. If you don't know this at this point, take out a pen and a piece of paper and write it down. You need to memorize that. Because moving forward, you're going to hear that all the time. You're going to have somebody say, what is 6 squared? What is 4 squared? What is 8 squared? And you might be going, I don't know what that means. When we say squared, we're meaning raised to the power of 2. So I could say this as 6 
to the power of two. I could say six to the second power, or I could say six squared. They all mean the same thing. So very important that you understand that definition. And another scenario that's gonna come up, when we raise a number to the third power, we say the number is cubed. So that means you have an exponent of three. Again, write this down, it's gonna come up a lot. So if I have four to the third power, we generally will say that's four cubed. Now you're not wrong if you say four to the third power or if you have four squared and you say four to the second power. It's just, you need to know both in case your teacher asks you. It might say, what is four cubed? And you go, well, I don't know what that is. You'll be in trouble. So again, memorize that when someone says something is cubed, it means they have raised it to the third power. When something is squared, they have raised it to the second power. Okay, let's do a little basic practice here. We wanna write each in exponent form. Nothing that's gonna to be too complicated. So I have the number seven and it's being multiplied by itself. So I have seven times seven times seven times seven times seven. So the base is the number that is being multiplied by itself. So obviously that is seven. Again, this is the base. And then my exponent tells me how many factors of seven I have. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Five is the exponent. Okay, so this is seven to the fifth power. Here we have six times six times six times six times six times six times six. So the base is obviously six, right? That's the number that's being multiplied by itself. And then what's the exponent? What is the exponent? Let me just label this real quick as the base. The exponent again tells us how many factors of six we're gonna have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this would be to the seventh power. This is my exponent. What about nine times nine? Well, the base here, again, is the number that's multiplied by itself, and that's nine. So this is my base. And the exponent tells me how many factors I have. So I have one, two of those. So the exponent is two. This is my exponent. Very, very easy. What about four times four times four? Again, my base is gonna be the number that's multiplying by itself. So that's gonna be four. And then my exponent tells me how many factors I have. So I have one, two, three. So three is my exponent. Okay, so I have here that we also need to be able to reverse this process. So what does that mean? Well, basically what I'm saying is that when you see a problem with exponents in it, you need to be able to reverse it and write it as a repeated multiplication. So in other words, if I have 10 to the fourth power, write this using multiplication. So I know the base is 10, so that's the number that's being multiplied by itself, and the exponent is four, telling me I have four factors of 10. So this is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. All right, I just did the thing I was doing before, only backwards. All right, I took it from where it had an exponent and wrote it with multiplication, whereas before I was taking with multiplication and writing it where it had an exponent. What about nine to the sixth power? Well, my base is nine, so that's the number I'm multiplying by itself, and six is the exponent, that's how many factors I'm gonna have. So nine times nine, times nine, times nine, times nine, times nine. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six factors of nine. What about 12 to the 10th power? Well, I'm gonna have 10 factors of 12, right? My base is 12. Again, that's the number that's being multiplied by itself. And 10 is the exponent. It tells me how many of them I have. So this is 12 times 12 times 12 times 12 times 12 times 12 times 12 and I lost count, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need three more. So times 12 times 12 times 12. So now we have 10 factors of 12. Then the last one we'll look at is five cubed. Or again, you could say five to the third power or five to the power of three. Doesn't matter as long as you know that this is three factors of five, right? The exponent is a three and the base is five. So that means I have five times five times five. Okay, so the next thing you need to be able to do is evaluate when you see an exponent. So if I see something like two to the seventh power and your teacher says, what's the value for that? Or what's it equal to? 
Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write this using multiplication. So in other words, I have two as my base and I have seven factors of two. So just exactly what we just did. So two times two times two times two times two times two times two. So seven factors of two. And then I just go through and multiply. And a lot of times, especially for these scenarios that come up often, you'll just memorize what the answers are. I already know that two to the seventh is 128. I don't even need to do the multiplication. But we're gonna go through and say two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, 16 times two is 32, 32 times two is 64, 64 times two is 128. 128. What about three to the fourth power? Well, again, we're gonna write this using multiplication and then just do the multiplication. So three to the fourth power is three times three times three times three. Again, four factors of three. The four is the exponent, tells me how many factors I have. Three is the base, that's the number I'm multiplying by itself. So three times three is nine, nine times three is 27, 27 times three is 81, 81. What about 17 squared or 17 to the power of two? Well, this is 17 times 17. And I don't know this off the top of my head. I would have to either use a calculator or do vertical multiplication. So let's just do that on the screen here. So seven times seven is 49. Seven times one is seven plus four is 11. And now the benefit of this is I'm multiplying one times 17. So that's easy to do, right? I just shift this over here and I can just basically write 17 as, as my answer. And now I can just add, bring this down. One plus seven is eight, one plus one is two. So we end up with 289. And so we'll write this as equal to 289. Okay, what about 15 squared? Well, again, we would write this as 15 times 15 and then we would multiply. So I happen to know 15 times 15 off the top of my head but in case you don't, you would do a vertical multiplication. This is 225. And this is one that's gonna come up quite a bit. Okay, what about four to the fifth power? So this is four times four times four times four times four. So this one's pretty easy to do in your head. Four times four is 16, 16 times four is 64. 64 times four is 256. And then 256 times four is 1024. And again, this is another one that I have memorized. We'll learn later on that four to the fifth power is the same as two to the 10th power. And I know that probably doesn't make any sense to you right now, but later on, you're gonna understand why that's the case. So the answer for right now though is, again, four times four times four times four times four, which gives us 1024. Okay, lastly, let's talk about 10 raised to a whole number larger than zero. This right here, what I'm gonna teach you is gonna save you a lot of time because you come across these problems a lot and there's a very simple way to solve them. So let's say I have something like 10 to the second power. What's that equal to? Well, it's 10 times 10. Now I taught you in the lesson where we talked about multiplying with trailing zeros, you can do one times one and then attach two zeros to this. So this is 100. Notice how 10 squared produced two trailing zeros. This is two, two trailing zeros. Look at 10 cubed. This equals 10 times 10 times 10. One times one times one is one, three trailing zeros. One, two, three. So three as the exponent, three trailing zeros. And I think some of you can already see where I'm going with this. If I have 10 to the fourth power, 10 to the fourth power, I get 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 equals one times one times one times one, which is one, and then one, two, three, four trailing zeros. One, two, three, four. So again, the exponent is four and I have four trailing zeros. So here's the rule. If we're working with whole numbers and they're larger than the number one, so meaning two and moving out forward, okay? I didn't include one in that because 10 to the first power is just 10, and we learned that earlier. But essentially what you do is, you write a one followed by the exponent number of zeros. That's it. It's very, very simple. So this is especially helpful when we have some huge number. Let's say we have something like 10 to the 11th power. I could go through and write out, okay, 10 times 10 times 10, basically 11 factors of 10. 
I could go through and multiply them. I'd be there all day if I didn't use the trick for trailing zeros. Using this trick with exponents, it's very, very simple. I write a one and I follow it with 11 zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, comma, comma, comma. So I end up with 100 billion. And go ahead and punch that up on a calculator. You'll see that it's correct. And again, this works. So you could do something like 10 to the 15th. That would be a one followed by 15 zeros or 10 to the 90th. That would be a one followed by 90 zeros. So using this technique can help you out a lot because a lot of times on your test, you'll get at least one to two of these where they'll say, okay, what is 10 to the fourth? Or what is 10 to the seventh? And you just write a one and you follow it with four zeros. Or with 10 to the seventh, you write a one and you follow it with seven zeros and you're done. Right? You don't have to sit there and go through and multiply and do all this extra work.